Hey everyone, this is Greg, your host of Goddamn GameCube. Thank you for tuning in to Season 2. All episodes in this season were conducted virtually over the internet because of the coronavirus pandemic, so please excuse any audio glitches or oddities you may hear during these episodes. Thank you and enjoy. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning in to another episode of Goddamn GameCube. My name is Greg, I am your host today. Uh, we have some very unique programming on the schedule today. This is the first time we've done this. Uh, March Madness is coming in a couple of weeks. Uh, so if you're a college basketball fan, I'm sure you're excited. But here on Goddamn GameCube, we discuss video games. I have my panel of Final Fantasy experts, and we are going to go head to head with Final Fantasy games, and we are going to decide what the best Final Fantasy game is in the opinion of Goddamn GameCube. So. We have got my brother Nick is in the house, and uh, our friends Alex and Will are here as well. Thank you guys for joining. Of course, anytime. How this is going to work, and just so the audience knows, uh, my panel has not seen this bracket before. Only I have. So they're not going to know what games I have put head to head until I shout it out. And so you guys are going to be my panel. I'm going to have you guys debate amongst the three of you what game is the best head to head. If, if it gets a two to one consensus, that game is going to move on. If we can't get a consensus, I'm going to have my input. Or uh, as you guys know, there are a lot of Final Fantasy games. Maybe one of you hasn't played some of these and I have. I will interject where I have to. So now that the rules have been laid out. Now, round one. We'll start off with a softball here. Round one is Final Fantasy one versus Final Fantasy two. Nick, <laughs> oh, <laughs> Nick, oh, Nick, why don't you start God. us off? And then if if Will or Alex has any <laughs> rebuttal, they can rebut you. Go ahead. Which game should move on? Uh, I th okay. So I think we have to make a distinction here. When I'm going, I'm going to talk about Final Fantasy one, and I'm going to talk about the Game Boy Advance remake and not the original on the NES. I believe that game was made before I was born, so I have not played that one. Uh, <laughs> but the uh, Dawn of Souls remake of Final Fantasy 1, I actually think it's a pretty solid game. It was probably one of my first ever RPGs. Like, I think it came out in, what, 2000 or something? It was the Game Boy Advance. Yeah, it was Game Boy Advance. I honestly, for like a first, first game ever, at a remake of an NES game, I think it's pretty good. You get to choose your classes, you have a fun little adventure. I mean, you get to really set your own difficulty by setting up your party the way you want. You don't have to bring a healer if you don't want to, but it's probably a good idea. Nick, do you have any reasoning why it should beat Final Fantasy 2, or do you have any reasoning why Final Fantasy 2 is worse? Yeah, so, okay, Final Fantasy 2, everything about Final Fantasy 2 is great, except actually playing it. <laughs> this game sucks, okay? Um, <laughs> I think Final Fantasy II's music, it's like story, it's like for an NES turned Game Boy Advance game, it's pretty good. Like you could probably listen to the Rebel Army theme on loop for 12 hours and not get tired of it, right? Right. But playing this game fucking blows. <laughs> it is so grindy. It is so miserably hard. <laughs> Honestly, if I didn't, if I played this game later in life, I played it when I was what, 11 mm. and I beat it. It was ridiculous. If I'd played it like yesterday, I wouldn't have made it three hours not saying, nah, fuck this, I'm good. So I don't know what you guys think, but... It was also completely broken when it came out, too, wasn't it? Like, the original version of that game, like, had huge exploits in it. So you could just, I don't know about like, that. It, it was, like, a broken, buggy game. Like, it was, it was... Will, do you, ha do you disagree with Nick's take of Final Fantasy 1 versus 2? I think Nick had a really, really good take. I, I guess I would frame my, like, not from any particular version of like the releases, but um, I, I think there's something pure about Final Fantasy One. You know, like it's the um, it, it's it's not like the first RPG ever. It's it's the first like kind of JRPG though. It's like the template JRPG. It does all like the it has your fight item magic commands. Like you can run away. You got your black mage and red mage and white mage. Um, and there's like zero story. It's just you go to the four places and you get the shit. Um, and there like it. Like Nick said, like it did that stuff, like it functioned, it was good. Like, and for the time and like on the NES, that was pretty much like what you could get for an RPG. I mean, you could get Ultima on the PC, but I mean, this was sort of like a, an introduction of sort of like what a JRPG was. So I guess from that perspective, it, I would say like two did have a really awesome, like it, for the time I had better story. They actually put some time into like the narrative and there was characters 
um, and uh, like they came and went instead of like being generic. Um, but it also was just kind of a mess of the game, unfortunately. And uh, <laughs> yep. um, like the the leveling system, I mean, that it's came like, awful. that was kind of ahead of its time. Like, because yeah. I, I don't like Elder Scrolls. I don't know if like Arena was out around the same time doing the same thing. Maybe they're taking cues. I don't remember if those were like coinciding release dates, but like leveling up by hitting things and doing like the things that like you normally would do as that class, you know, pretty, it's kind of forward thinking. There's like an interesting take on it. Um, but you know, they botched it and, uh, <laughs> fortunately, yeah, you got that right. <laughs> like, unfortunately you can't like, if it's a, if it's not fun to play, then, um, mm -hmm. it doesn't win over like to like the pure experience of final fantasy one, which is like kind of quintessential. So Alex, um, do you have a take on final fantasy one versus two? You know, it's such a riveting discussion. I wish I could contribute. I have never played one or two. Okay. Yep. That, that's totally fine. So I want to reiterate, there are many Final Fantasy games, and if I need to interject, I will. In this case, I don't, but I have played <laughs> and beat both of these, and I do agree with the consensus where Final Fantasy 1 is going to move on. Um, Final Fantasy 2 is so fucking grindy, dude. Like, it just, I, it's like, I like the do stuff to get better, like Elder Scrolls-y level -y thing, but how many times do I have to cast Flare or, like, Ultima to get it to level 9? Like, it, dude, it's so grindy. Like, it you drives have to, like, me... hit yourself, too. It's not yeah, even yeah, grindy. Yeah, 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 yeah. into one fight and start hitting yourself. It's so dude, stupid. I know. <laughs> dude, as soon as you start just jumping up a staircase up and down for hours, you know there's a problem with it. That's a little Morrowind reference. But anyway... Final but Fantasy for 1. For some reason, it was better in those games. Like, in I know. This game, it's just like you press the same <laughs> button over and over again. Like, what's the point? All right. So Final Fantasy 1 has won the first round. So let's move on to the next head-to-head. -head. I'm going to bounce over to the other side of the bracket here. Oh, Greg, have you played and beaten every Final Fantasy game? No. My Final... <laughs> My Final Fantasy track record is really strange, and maybe I'll reveal it later. I have beaten all the spin-off games and like the weird ones, and I've and I've played uh, like bits and pieces of all of them, and I've beaten the early ones. It's really strange. Have I beaten Crystal Chronicles? Yeah. Have I have I <laughs> have I beaten Final Fantasy VII? No. <laughs> I love it. That's it's really awesome. strange. Brent, so, does that include X two? No, don't you weeb. Did you beat X2? I absolutely beat X2. <laughs> um, more, I, so this next bracket I put together is more of a which game do you hate less? So this next oh, head-to-head. Yeah, this next head-to-head. <laughs> Oh. And we already did two? Oh, God. Yeah, what there's else? There's going to be, there's gonna be a hot take in here, I know it. Oh, oh yeah, it's going to be great. Final Fantasy 15 or Final Fantasy 3? Whoa. Oh, 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 okay. Wow. This is, I like or I should say, I, well, I'm sorry, don't, don't let me give you a double negative. There are going to be even more negatives across this. This is just more of a softball negative. Which okay. game do you think is better, even though both games get hated on pretty thoroughly? Which terrible game do you like the most? Hey, okay, wait a second. Okay, we're going to get the hot take. I'm sorry. Oh, here we go. I, Final Fantasy three might be my guilty pleasure. Okay. Oh. Um, I don't know why I am so drawn to this game. But I should say, DS remake, not the original. Did not play the original probably before I was born, but I did play the DS remake. Sure. Fair. Honestly, I think Final Fantasy III is very fun, but I'm going to say it. Y'all are going to hate me. I'm going to say it. Uh -oh. This is the Dark Souls of Final Fantasy. Oh. This game is fucking hard, man. It is. It's very it difficult. Is brutal. <laughs> yeah. This game is fucking brutal. Right. Yeah. Um, but honestly, though, I like the job system in Final Fantasy III. Sure. Which was then copied was... in every other game for the rest of history. Right. So, I think it was yeah. the first Final Fantasy to do it, to have that uh, that early job system where you go to the crystal, you get your new jobs, right. and you you know pick and choose whatever you want. This one was a little bit more limited, mm -hmm. where where you were a certain class, you couldn't do anything else. Where in later games, you can like take skills from other classes or whatever. But right. in this one, if you were a knight, you were a knight, and you could do nothing else unless you changed. But... Uh, can I just say one thing about this game before I pass up to someone else? Sure. Who, whichever, whoever on Square made the decision to not make Phoenix Downs viable, they should be in jail. <laughs> oh <my laughs> yeah. God. Fuck that. Who yeah, I know. Thought that was a good idea. Dude. <laughs> I know. I Nick. Preserves the original gameplay experience. <laughs> yeah, just fucking dying <laughs> over and over again. <laughs> dude, like, I was going to. Like, dude. Yeah, I was going to say, though, like, do you have any reasoning? Nick, did you make a consensus? Which game Which game would you put ahead, 3 or 15? 
Oh no, I dodged that. Um, you know what? I Nick, if you don't, the... if you want to hear other people's arguments first, I'll let you pass. Nope, I'm going three over fifteen. <laughs> okay. Go for it. Yeah, sure. So I mean, okay. So Nick, you said three over fifteen. Is that right? Right. So you, okay. So you're going with three over um, uh, my chemical romance. So let's go to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So let's go to Will for a second. Um, do you have a take either way? I do. Um, I, I have a take, but I have to admit that I have not played 15. Oh, really? And so, Greg, oh, it is up to you whether you would like to provide the tiebreaker in this case. But I'm still going to give my, my freaking take here. Uh, Please. That's not going to stop me from taking. Yeah. Uh, so Greg, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it. yeah, yeah, please. I <laughs> dude, I think that's gonna be the episode description. I haven't played it, but it's not gonna stop me from taking. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to take it up a notch. Yeah, um, go ahead. Excellent. You will. So, okay. Um, like Nick, I played Final Fantasy three on the DS, and that is how I experienced it. Um, my kind of opinion on Final Fantasy three is that like it, I recognize um, the refinements over one that they made, um, and that ultimately they made a better version of Final Fantasy One um, by incorporating some like characters that you know made had some sort of reaction on the world, um, incorporating that job system that was more complex. Um, there was a bit of a story arc there, but overall, I was left cold because I found it like there was really nothing on that at, the, at that game that set it apart. Um, I guess if you're looking for the most pure Final Fantasy, like straight up vanilla experience you possibly can get at a like ramped up difficulty level, um, then uh, you know that would be like probably put it above like maybe some other ones. Um, but the reason I wouldn't put it above 15 is because just because 15 looks interesting and it looks like it has some cool combat. I don't know. Like I I think if I had the choice to go between one of those two today, I would probably like at least want to try 15. Um, although again, Greg, you're gonna have to tiebreak me because I never played it, and I could like it could be absolute garbage and trash. But then again, <laughs> I've liked some garbage and trash that people didn't like. So, so uh, I okay. did not really like three, is what I can I can say. I would consider <laughs> three one of the weaker Final Fantasy games, uh, unfortunately. My heart, man. Like, listen, I don't think there are any really like terrible, it. like straight up bad Final Fantasy games, but that's probably the one I would prefer at least. Okay. And I do agree with Nick, the what he says about the the difficulty and like I think there I did grind all the way to the end dungeon of that game, so there is sort of like that that experience you get that like right. banging your head against that wall of grinding RPG experience that like makes you just like want to beat the game and like that exists in Final Fantasy three and it's epic and the bosses are cool and the DS remake had good graphics, um, so yeah. Well, I think My Chemical Romance was uh, it was the app description there. Black Parade era. Uh, um, I think we could have picked, you could have picked like Tetris against Final Fantasy XV and it, it, Tetris is going in. Um, uh, yeah, 15, like, I, I never, I don't think I ever finished 3 to be perfectly honest with you, but I specifically did not finish 15 because I was just so disappointed in it. <laughs> you know? Like, it, it was a game with so much potential. And I think that's what hurts the most is that you can see bits of um, a realized story in there and the uh, the camaraderie between the four main characters. I don't think you really see like, really like four, I guess, dynamic characters that all have an arc at the same time on the same screen. You know, it's Cloud's arc or it's Squall's arc in uh, in these games. And I had to buy the DLC to get that in 15, <laughs> which is horrendous. <laughs> Yeah, so unfortunately they screwed the pooch. It was in development hell <laughs> for years, and uh, I begrudgingly uh, put three, even though I never really finished it. I remember. Oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with your take on 15, Alex. I want, because 15 is gonna get bump, bounced. I just want to put my take out there because I sure. do have some <laughs> on 15. It's gonna get bounced right now. I need to say it. Uh, I thought I finished 15. Um, I thought it had some really nice moments to it. I thought um, some of the characters, while they didn't have great individual arcs, I thought the bond between them was nice at times. They did a pretty good job integrating it into the narrative. But this was my main main complaint about this. In all of Final Fantasy games, your party is a bunch of misfit heroes from all across the world who come together to serve a common purpose. Right. In Final Fantasy 15, you get them all at the start and they all know what they're going for. Mm -hmm. So you don't have that whole, hey, this guy from another country is gonna help me out because he believes in my cause. No, I'm gonna take these three guys with me because they're my slaves and they're gonna help me become king. Right. right. And that's ultimately what 
what does what just makes me feel it's inferior. And that's what Gerard Way rest. wanted the whole time. Correct. Yes. yes. It was a vanity project. Yeah. <laughs> right. So I think the consensus here is Final Fantasy three is moving on and fifteen is getting bounced. I love how it got bounced first round. Yeah, with yep. with, with all due respect to my chemical. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> what, what, so what should I say? This sorry. is um, three cheers for Final Fantasy three. Yes. Um, so yeah. here we I'm go. I'm so happy 15 got bounced in the first round. That Wait. is so funny. I love yeah. it. <laughs> good. And I'm comfortable um, with this. I think it's a good decision. Yeah. Okay. So this one is going to be a little bit harder. Um, oh. We have a good matchup here for the next one. I've per- I've done this on purpose. So there are some memes and there are some real tough decisions. Oh, no. So Easy this ones. yeah. So this is going to be a tough one. Um, the next head-to-head is Final Fantasy VI versus Final Fantasy X. Oh, wow. Oh, I mean, a game. A, uh, these games, p- fans generally and Fuck. genuinely, they really enjoy both. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think let's go in reverse order. Why don't we give um, Mr. Alex, why don't we give you the first take on six versus ten? Yeah, for me, um, for me, I'm going to go with ten to go ahead. I just I think uh, I think ten is a linchpin in the series. And even though not everyone will agree with me, but um, I, I put it up there with uh, Final Fantasy VII um, as um, like a landmark. Um, you know, it was a platform, not platform, um, console mover. Sure. Um, yeah, and um, I just think the, the the story was bittersweet, and it was a mature story that a lot of RPGs don't really hit that that level of drama and the uh, and the the plot twists that you know, have been done before, really captured the essence of uh, what a JRPG story can, you know, can, can do. I mean, and it was a landmark game for, for better or worse. I mean, some people would say 10 was the end for them. You know what I mean? Where like right. all the games after that, they hated. I know not everybody is that. So, I mean, if unless you have any argument for six, I'm going to put you as a, um, you're going you're gonna to put 10 forward. 10's going in for me. Okay, Will, if, uh, feel free to defend either one and whatever your take is. Cool, yeah. I mean, I'm loving all these takes so far. I think everyone's <laughs> absolutely right with what they're saying. Um, <laughs> this is, is a tough one. Um, okay, so uh, for me, like 10, I'll say this. 10 is one of the only Final Fantasy games where I actually mastered it. You know, you master those games where you get all the items, you, yeah. all the, you do the mini games. Um, I did that with 10 because I think 10 is just super fun and smooth. Um, the sphere grid is awesome. Um, the story is engaging, um, and the world is interesting. And of course, like, I, actually, even for now, like, still playing it, it still looks great. You know, it's a really great looking game, um, and it had it was fully voiced. I think for the most part, it was fully voiced. Blitzball was super fun. Yeah, these are all really good things. I love Final Fantasy X. However, Final Fantasy VI is a special game. Um, it's probably where Final Fantasy most found like its brand identity, if you could call it that. Like it took everything that Final Fantasy was kind of working and iterating on as like a, what a JRPG or I could even call it like what a console RPG like experience kind of could be. And it kind of took all those things and just like did them really well, if not perfectly. Um, And it's gameplay wise, Probably, it, you know, obviously, like if you're looking for a modern RPG experience, it's not going to give you that. But there are a lot of modern things about it that still are kind of still present in Final Fantasy today. So, you know, in a lot of ways, Final Fantasy hasn't changed a whole lot since six. And there's a lot of reasons. And that's because six was like it just it played really well. Um, the characters were really memorable. Um, it had a really awesomely paced narrative, which by today's standards might be a little simplistic. But, um, you know, the the world getting destroyed like halfway through the game was you know, pretty epic. Um, and then the last thing I'll say about this game is I experienced this not on the original SNES, but through an emulator. And this game kind of like brought me into, like I was just thirsty for like RPGs on the console. There was just something about them that like, and this kind of like was the th- the one that sort of opened my eyes up to like all the different, like there were so many copycats for this game. Um, and like, uh, Enix actually uh, made a lot of them, which is kind of funny. Um, but like through that and through emulators and like, you know, this was probably one of the greatest all time, probably RPG experiences for me, just cause just like at the time. So I'm probably like coloring my opinion a little bit on that. That's probably what I'd say. It's just like, it's such a template. Like it did all this stuff that Final Fantasy was supposed to do in just like the exact most Final Fantasy way um, for the most part. And uh, 
the soundtrack as well is just a marvel so will so i can put your vote on record which game is moving on six wow so we have alex with 10 we have you with six that's a tough call though that now nick nick <laughs> there are a lot of marbles on this dude like are you are the one who's here. gonna be the who's gonna be the deciding vote here and just so you know it's all fun and games on this podcast so don't be too offended if the game you like doesn't make it <laughs> all right Greg, i really think you set us up with this one <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely did i some of these are setups um, oh, of course they so are. Nick, you are the tiebreaker. So be as thorough mm. or as um, d- or as uh, cut and dry as Quick you want. As I want. All right. So I love both of these games. I think I would put both of them in my top three Final Fantasies or even games ever. Right. So Final Fantasy X. It's it, this one's an interesting one. I played this game pretty late in life. I played it um, the PS4 remake when I was like. 26 or 27 sure. something like that um and i thought the uh the relationship between listen i know his real name is supposed to be titus i can't not call him titus sorry i think titus is really stupid yeah it's I fine can't, i can't do that <laughs> between titus and his dad i thought that was just a really really interesting relationship ship they had maybe if i was younger i don't know if i would have understood it mm-hmm. um honestly what put me off from playing this game is i saw all the memes first like i hear the titus laugh i hear all the yeah. stupid shit and i'm like why do i want to play this game it seems like it's cringy and bad and then i actually played it and i'm like wait a minute this game is really fun all these characters are really cool yeah. and what i the one, one thing i really love about it too is so i tend to be a pretty stoic guy when any sort of media can absolutely wreck me, I hold it in very high regard. Sure. This game and the ending broke my heart. Yeah. And fuck, man, if you don't shed a manly tear playing Final Fantasy X and watching that ending, you have no soul. I know. Like, if a game can fucking break my heart, tear it in half, and throw it on the street, that is a very highly regarded narrative. I was going to say, do you... And it feels like you're very emotionally picking 10, but I know you have a lot of love for Final Fantasy VI. Like, I know this well. I haven't talked about VI yet. I know. I was about to say, like, do you have, have like, the other side of Nick that is going to tell you, swallow your tears, I'm picking (laughs) VI? So, Final Fantasy VI is a really special game for me. Um, Like Will, I played it on an SNES emulator when I was very, very young. I think I was in high school, maybe younger, when I played it. This game was another very emotional experience for me. The way they intertwined, what is it, 12, 14 playable characters into one game from all different traces of the world. I thought it was pretty incredible what they did, especially on an SNES engine, with every character having their own unique theme music. Like, you know, when when Locke goes on screen, his theme plays, you know, some cool shit's going to happen. Mm-hmm. You know, when Setzer's like gambling music plays, you know, some funky shit's about to go down. And this game's it's actually very funny, too. Um, the, the writing and the narrative is it, it, ca- it catches a lot of different things, whether it's humor, whether it's sadness. I think um, a lot of the characters really go through some rough shit. Um, and this is probably going to be a hot take of mine. I do think the villain of Final Fantasy VI, Kefka, is the best villain in the series. And I think what he's done and what you watch him do throughout the game is just, especially for its time, so mind-boggling. There's there's Salise's, Salise's, like, almost suicide scene that's like, holy shit, they put this in a game? Right. And then everything that happens thereafter you are constantly pulled along on this incredible journey that really has no main character that switches through all these perspectives to get a slice of life from everybody involved in this conflict and like will said the soundtrack is fucking great the especially for an snes like listen go listen to dancing mad Dancing Mad walked so one winged angel could run. Like, come on. <laughs> Nick, you sound like Derek. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Sorry, John Billy Frank. Sorry. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Now I know who uh, we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Nick, you, Nick, Nick, now that your Senate filibuster speech has ended, what, <laughs> what, now that, Nick, you've stood on the podium here and said yep. your piece, yep. what game is moving on? I feel like you made, I think. Nick has deserved the chance to make the call. What game's moving on? Well, guys, 
I love both games, and I'm really sad to see it go in this round. But I'm picking Final Fantasy VI. Yeah. Okay. On. Final Fantasy VI is moving on. Yeah, we got a wide range of takes with that. One. I really liked the. Um, we all had something different to say about each game. We did. I, Two um, very good games. Unfortunately, one had yeah. to lose. Yeah. Random question for you guys: Do you think FF6 inspired Octopath Traveler? Oh I, yes, I, I would think say absolutely. yes, but I think the Bravely yes. Default and Octopath Traveler games are really based on three, like with the class yeah. systems and stuff. And you're probably right, where six iterate they do look iterated like on um, or, or six influence yep. Octopath as well. We'll talk about that. So the next bracket, I'm not sure if this is going to be a softball or not. Um, I like the game that's probably going to lose. Um, so this next bracket is Final Fantasy V versus the very famous Final Fantasy VII. And this is the original, not the remake. So Nick, why don't you start us off? Okay, so uh, before Final Fantasy V gets absolutely trounced, I just want to say Final Fantasy V is really fun. Again, I played the Game Boy Advance version. Got it you know, a long time ago. We both played it. I believe we both finished it. Yeah. Um, I think it's really fun. It's sort of, it's weird. I played it obviously before Final Fantasy III because it hadn't come out yet, but this game really took the job system from three and made it and really expanded on it, right? Mm -hmm. A lot more jobs, you a lot more customizable. Honestly, some of the shit you can do is really fucking bonkers and it makes it really fun. Like there's some crazy shit. Like I wrote it down here. What you can do is like, there's a, you can take, you can take the dual wield skill from the ninja, take the attack four times skill from the ranger, take the spell blade skill from the mystic knight, and shoot and, and attack eight times with a flare infused blade at win one round of combat four times with all characters. It is absolutely <laughs> stupid, but it's really, really funny. It's so dumb and it's so broken, but goddamn, man, this game is fun. I, um, Nick, I now I. So does the memory outdo Final Fantasy VII? For I'm guessing not. Dude, no. I, I'm not going to let a meme beat Final Fantasy VII, but I do want to say, everybody, you should play Final Fantasy V. This game, I think, is, I think it was one of the more underrated Final Fantasies. Yeah. You can hate on the narrative. On the villain's name, the villain is stupid. His name is X-Death. What the fuck name is that? That's just really stupid. The hero's name is Butts. <laughs> <laughs> I forget yeah, you can name your characters. I forget that's his actual name. Yeah. <laughs> but like, I think this game may have had, because I played this game when I was young, this game may have had the first video game death that I was legitimately sad about uh, when the old guy dies to X death. I right. was legitimately shaken up about that. I was like, no, I finally get an old guy in a video game and he fucking dies. God damn it. I know. This game is fun. If you haven't played it, you should play it. It's not better than Final Fantasy VII. Let's not kid ourselves. Uh, do I have to say anything about VII about why it's better? No. <laughs> okay. uh, let's I'll um, seven. <laughs> I mean, um, uh, Alex, why don't you uh, why don't you go next? Uh, if you have, <laughs> if you if you have a a, uh, a a argument either way, go ahead. Someone say something about Final Fantasy VII for the sake of the recording. Oh, I, I, I will. <laughs> uh, Nick, I love your letdown of Final Fantasy V. That was really nice of you. Yeah. Like, listen, Five, you're a great guy, but like, seven was really hot. So. Yeah. <laughs> I know. Um, you know, like so many people my age, you know, Final Fantasy VII was like the first game I really sunk like a hundred hours into. Mm -hmm. And I, it was a gateway drug to, to <laughs> JRPGs and RPGs in general. You know, looking back on it, especially with the remake uh, making it in vogue again, um, the story is surprisingly mature. Um, it's probably one of the, you know, depending on how you interpret the ending, can be one of the darker games you'll ever play. And I always loved um, the way they handled Red 13 Mm -hmm. his his arc throughout the game is that um are we are we doing spoilers I, I don't know wait you know what why don't you ready why don't you keep it spoiler light even though i've had like uh let me look at my watch 24 years to beat this game <laughs> and i and I, I never beat it why don't you why don't you keep it spoiler light only for me yeah i don't know what happens in this game greg uh, anyway. <laughs> 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 but i just i love the idea of um Sure, to keep it as light as possible. Sure. There's a, there's a surprisingly uh, hopeful 
but sad message that, um, you know, the, the, the beings that were here before us, um, you know, the meek shall inherit the earth sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, that I really think that that doesn't happen in video games at, at all. And it's so quick. It's like, if you blink, you'll miss it. Um, it's surprisingly, it's, it's a surprising level of genius for 1997. Right. Say that. Right. Will, do you have any argument either way or are we pushing Final Fantasy uh, 7 to uh, <laughs> to the next round here? Yeah, I mean, like, it's a definitely a weird, uh, it's a weird, there are two weird games to compare. And obviously, like, Final Fantasy VII um, has so much more, like, going for it and, and, you know, even over and above, like, its predecessor in some ways that, you know, really comparing them, like, in a bracket like this uh, can seem like David versus Goliath a little bit. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I'm going to I'm gonna give it to Seven, of course, obviously. But I will give the hot take that... Um, Five is actually mechanically a, a better game than seven Ooh. in terms of straight up. That's an amazing, scorching hot take. Please <laughs> give me more of this. I will. I will say it in the in terms of straight up like JRPG combat mechanics and just like speed and pace of play, um, and like what Nick said, the exploits and shit. They're they're a lot crazier, and the job system is cool. In Final Fantasy VII, you're um, kind of more locked into stuff. And it was just, but here's the thing, that game is totally focused on its one mechanic. Um, and in a way, uh, and it had that like off, uh, that odd number Final Fantasy vibe of like, just kind of putting story by the wayside. Um, it didn't have like the awesome like battles and the, you know, the materia system was actually cooler because it was like putting crystals into weapons and like beating up your gigantic sword. And the characters were so much awesomer and, um, you know, none of them can turn into like ninja cyborg warriors that like shot swords fifteen different times. But Cloud Strive is an icon, man. Like, what is what is Bart doing? He's he's like he's a nothing person. He has no character. Like right. nothing. Um, you know, you like got so attached to the people in Final Fantasy VII. So anyway, like I, I had to say that just because like Final there were some things about Final Fantasy VII in the way like its combat worked, um, like the summons. I think. You know, like after all this time, if you go back and play that, they can be a little slow. Um, there's not a huge amount of like flexible. Like, there's definitely like the best ways to play that game. Yeah. Um, and with a lot of the character, like the min maxing, kind of aspect to it. And like Final Fantasy V was a lot more open ended um, in a lot of respects. So you got to give it that. You know, mechanics wise, it had like a much more flexible system. Um, so if you take it just on that merit, like if that's what you want, then yeah, definitely. And it's still a fun game. But come on, it's <laughs> yeah, good. yeah, and yeah, I think so. We've had a consensus here. Final Fantasy VII is moving on, even though I will agree, Final Fantasy V is really fun, and I enjoyed putting all the classes together and mixing and matching. It it's kind got of, some stuff over the other ones in those respect, in those specific cool. respects. Like, yeah, you know, it got a tough draw. It got a really tough draw, yeah, dude. I yeah. mean, you know, yeah. I could only organize organize these in so many ways, and like I. This yeah. is the one where, like, this this Final Fantasy V got the dagger here, maybe like undeservedly. Yeah, but yeah. it's it's the, the problem bi- is yeah, it's, it's like we're gonna be talking about seven a lot, I think. So yeah. like, kind of getting it all out there on the table for like against five just seems unfair. You know? Yeah, like, there's yeah. some like seven's got a lot going for it against the other games too, um, which I said nothing about seven. I only talked yeah. about five. <laughs> Hold it about seven for later. Man. Yeah. <laughs> well, let's um, let's move right along here. So I, I, I have a strong opinion on the next one, but I'm not on the panel. So he, here we go. So this is an interesting one. Um, Final Fantasy 13 versus oh Final God. Fantasy Crystal Chronicles. <laughs> Wait, are we mainlining Crystal Chronicles now? Is that what this is? Yeah. So I is had Activate to make in here too. I had to make a choice, which I won't spoil. Like there are so many like spin-offs, and there are so many. There are a couple of these games that are online only, and I had to be very careful about which ones I included. Wow, interesting. So, because I could only do sixteen as well, because there are so many entries. All right. Uh, All so right. Final Fantasy thirteen versus Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles on the GameCube. <laughs> this is Jesus now, Christ. Okay. Now, this is, uh, now I'd love uh, to... Um, is there anybody who would like to go first? Because I kind of... I'll go first. I kind of want Alex to go first on this. Go Alex. And I definitely... Take I have a take on this if needed, but go ahead. All right. 13 was a mistake. <laughs> 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 it, it, you know, it, again, so much potential... 
and so much of it is stymied on um, you know the extremely on rails nature of the game the fact that the story is bleak i feel for no reason like <laughs> you know you know there's like a, there's this horrible plague and people everyone's got it it's like a I don't, and there's no cure it's like what? I don't know. And then there's and the that, tutorial is 18 hours long and you yeah, hate it. It's 18 <laughs> hours long. And then it's like, you know, who I forget the uh, the dude who has the bird on his shoulder the whole game. The, Saz? Yeah, Saz. Just, yeah. Saz is the best. I, there will be no Saz slander on this podcast, okay? <laughs> so, I, 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 I uh, yeah, it's just, it's just a missed opportunity. Uh, I never played the sequels, uh, Lightning Returns or... 13 2. Good. Or really want to. Um, yeah. But, um, you know, there's something to be said about the combat system. There was sort of like a like a, like a a rhythm to it. But uh, I, I feel like it, it's sort of like the Resident Evil 4, but if Resident Evil 4 wasn't good. Uh, yeah. you, mean, you mean where it ruined the franchise forever? It, it ruined the franchise. Um, but. And it wasn't even good. Yeah. Oh. It wasn't that good, but the, the combat took all its cues going forward like 15 i feel is derivative of 13 and uh i i just i it seems that they're going in that real-time direction you know for better that was the seven remake in a way although it did it far better we're not talking about seven remake here but it did influence that game too you're right you're right i agree with that do you have anything to say on crystal chronicles uh <laughs> I, I played it many years ago on gamecube it was <laughs> it was fun from what i remember but like <laughs> By default, it's going in over 13. <laughs> I love that. I purposely put them together awesome. for that purpose because I, I now um, oh, I'm sorry. Let's let's actually move on to Will next. Will, do you have a take either way? Yeah, sort of like this one is probably more informed by personal by personal bias, I guess. Um, but uh, I, I was disappointed by Crystal Chronicles when it came out because I was a kind of a new GameCube owner and I wanted like a Final Fantasy game. I didn't want whatever Crystal Chronicles was. And I also don't <laughs> like multiplayer focused games yeah. particularly. So like um, that being said, you know, it wasn't like a bad game by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I agree completely. I think Alex described it perfectly about Final Fantasy 13 being a missed opportunity. Um, and the reason is, is like, I think that they had the really cool idea by actually taking the active turn battle system and making it real time. And that's kind of like the perfect, like that piece of it, where like the active turn battle system was actually happening in real time and as you input commands was like perfect uh, manifestation of like Final Fantasy of what that system could be. But they messed it up because, um, you know, the, the <laughs> leveling was obtuse and clunky and there was issues with um, just the item system and uh, the class switching didn't make any sense. And it just was like kind of clunky to play in the end. Um, to say nothing of like the linear structure, which I personally didn't really hugely mind too much because, um, you know, like that kind of game, you're really just in it for the combat anyway. Um, but the problem for me, I think, was the story most of all. I, I just did not like the characters. I did not like the voice acting. I couldn't tell you any particular event that stood up to me in that game. And I don't even know what it's about, even though I played like 36 hours of it. So, um, Jesus, I, it's really difficult comparison um, because I don't particularly like think that either of the games stood out very much but which game um, do you hate less i would have to i would have, i would give it to 13. Um, wow. the reason okay. is just because of my personal bias against everything that crystal chronicles really was <laughs> <laughs> i love that that's awesome <laughs> um like when i came out i was a gamecube owner i had just gotten that and man like it was a powerful system it was awesome but i didn't have any final fantasy games i had to borrow like my friend's playstation to play those and i wanted one for the gamecube and this is what they gave me this bullshit <laughs> four player shit like i didn't have any friends oh god i didn't have any friends <laughs> I would no, so yeah, no. Thirteen I at least got like some hours of enjoyment out of. Like I played maybe three quarters of that game. I got to the open world part, fine. Like I, I, I didn't love it, but you know, um, I, I definitely enjoyed it. Do what's funny, dude. I could be misremembering this. I think I hated Thirteen so much. I gave it to you to borrow and just said keep it. Like that, I, thank I, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was literally like seven years ago, but I don't remember. Yeah, That's awesome. I um, think so. That probably, probably was it. I mean, yeah, I like, I, I get it. Um, I would still rate it. You're gonna put, you're gonna put thirteen forward. Alex has gone with Crystal Chronicles, <laughs> and then unfortunately, it comes down to Nick. Oh, this is the worst tiebreaker you could ever make me do. <laughs> oh, God. Okay. 
Well, here we go then. Let's try and you know what? I took these notes for a reason. Let's let's put them together, shall sure. we? Sure. Okay, so Final Fantasy 13. Um, this is another game that I played, I don't want to say younger, but I believe it came out in 2009. So I was either just graduating high school or I was in my first year of college when it came out. So my video game taste hadn't really developed yet. Sure. So I did finish this game. Um, I think if I played it today, I would not finish it, <laughs> to be honest with you. Um, especially after, because I think it took Final Fantasy X's Sphere Grid and tried to make it something else and it just failed miserably. Yeah. Honestly, and you can beat that entire game just by using auto battle pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> so it's just like, why am I gonna play a game where I can just auto battle through pretty much all of it except the bosses? Yeah. Also, the final boss of this game, remember, I actually did finish this somehow. The final boss of this game did one of, what's, it's one of my, my biggest gaming pet peeves. In Final Fantasy 13, if you, the lead of your party dies, it's game Dude, over. Dude, I hate that in any game. Oh, I hate that. Now, I hate that, but there's also games that have that and also have instant death attacks. Yeah. So you can get instantly death and get a game over instantly. That's what happens in Final Fantasy 13's final boss fight. He is, the, I think, the only boss in that game that can cast death. And if he casts it on your lead member, and they die, it is game over. Now, I will say some positives of Final Fantasy 13, at least for its time, and honestly, even today, the game is beautiful. Yeah. Like, it might have some of the best graphics ever for a game of that era. I may be looking at it, you know, I may be looking at it more favorably somehow, but I remember those graphics being pretty much immaculate, especially for its time. Um, and I, I enjoyed some of the characters, I guess, Sa I kind of enjoy the lone stain man character, like Saz. Like he's the one who's like, "What the fuck is wrong with you all?" <laughs> and all the, everybody is really stupid. Yeah, I, I do enjoy that aspect. Um, when the game opens up, it does get a lot better. But at the beginning, you are so constrained. Not only is the gameplay linear, but everybody is constrained to a certain. I say class, they're not really classes, but whatever you want to call them. Then later on in the game, you can kind of pick and choose and do whatever. Um, so it does get better as the game goes on, and it does have one thing that I do like. Yeah. Um, for a convenience standpoint, if you die in a battle, you can just restart from that battle. Oh yeah. Yeah. which is nice because this game is bullshit and you can get instant death instantly <laughs> and you can just restart it, which is nice. I think some of the music is nice too. Um, Bartandalus's boss music is really good. And so is the final boss. If you even make it there, yeah. chances are if you play this game tomorrow, you won't finish it. Yeah. To be honest. Now on to Crystal Chronicles. Um, so this is funny. I never finished Crystal Chronicles. Um, Wait, I did. You, you didn't? I did. You did. I got to the final area and I died to the boss and I had to do the whole cave again. And I just didn't want to. Okay. So I just never finished it. Yeah. Um, I think well, Crystal Chronicles is cute, man. Um, you go around this little chalice, your little dude just carries it around. And you can find different shit and you know, it's kind of a fun, customizable adventure. And Greg, you know, we played this game. I don't think we ever played it co-op, but I think your saves get intertwined somehow. At least, I don't know, something like that. I remember something like that happening. Um, I don't remember much of my playthrough of Crystal Chronicles, but from what I do remember, it was fun. I can't say that about Final Fantasy 13. <laughs> well, I'm going Crystal Chronicles. <laughs> Dude, I, no, I, I purposely I purposely did that because I was like, is the, is the hate for 13 so strong, you'll let the cuteness of Crystal Chronicles get through. And I, I do want to say one thing about 13. There's a really funny thing. I'm not sure if you guys know this about 13. It's about the graphics. Did you guys know that Lightning, the main character from 13, was a model for Louis Vuitton for a time? Really? really? Did not know yeah. that. The designer clothing and apparel brand. Yeah, they used her as a model in like their storefronts. It was really weird. weird. I don't know why. Fun little fun fact for you Lu all. Louis's yeah. more weeby than we thought, I guess. Yeah, uh, exactly. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that was honestly a more stirring debate than I thought it was going to be. Um, so anyway. Why did I put so much effort in debating Crystal fucking Chronicles? It's, it's, a, it's a cute. <laughs> I, didn't like e I didn't like either of those games, but Crystal Chronicles is cute. So, like, it's fine. Yep, Dude, it's and, fun. and the remake was shitty, which really sucks. The remake's awful. Dude. I never played it, but apparently it's terrible. I know. Um, anyway, we're going to move oh. right along here. So let's um let's go to a tougher one if you guys don't mind. Uh, both of these games um have a lot of love, um by the fans alike. So this will be a good debate. 
This next bracket is Final Fantasy 12 versus Final Fantasy Tactics on the PlayStation 1. Oh, uh, don't do this to me, man. Uh, no. Yeah. I thought you were going to do something worse, but that's pretty bad, too. Yeah. No, I... Um, oh. So this is a tough one. Why don't we... Oh, um, now, I don't think Will has started yet. So, Will, why don't you take it away first? This is 12 versus Final Fantasy Tactics, and this is the PlayStation original. Okay, 12 versus Tactics. Okay, so this is a really kind of like um, good, a well thought out uh, combo if we're including like these kind of outlier spinoff games into the main series, which is makes this so much tougher. Um, but okay, because uh, the reasons why that's a good pick is because they both take place in the same world. I did it on purpose. Yep. yep. Um, that's, that's, and um, the other reason is because they both happen to be like, Oh, amazing. So it's uh <laughs> this is a hard one. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately though uh tactics though um it's uh got to be that one for me just because um the nature of that game is just so much far and above like the the the, the story, the characters um it's so heavy. Uh the the plot is dark. Like all the subsequent Evil East material went in a fairy tale direction and I think 12 walks the line between uh, the original tactics and the more fairy tale oriented ones for the uh, handheld systems. Um, but I mean, Final Fantasy Tactics was like a medieval fantasy with all of the Final Fantasy um, elements like kind of woven into it. And uh, it was awesome and perfect. And like, that's just like the most mature expression of Final Fantasy. Um, and it had like a dark ending. It had palace intrigue. Um, it had all of these weighty themes, um, and uh, it was just an epic, epic story and experience. Um, not to mention just the brilliant uh, isometric tactical battle system. I, I don't know, like, was that the first one um, of its kind? I actually don't know. Whether, I, I well, don't know whether that... I, I that actually, might have been, like, Vagrant Story or some... some uh, not I think you could be story. right, though, because I think um, Ogre Battle, uh, the Ogre ones battle. That, that are grid-based, came after it. Yeah, no, this I think Ogre Battle were based on, on FFT. I think it's the same guy. But yeah, I mean, brilliant. It's just like a really brilliant, like the job system is flexible and broken and fun and awesome. Um, and like the uh, the the, uh, the weapons and all the armor and equipping, pure Final Fantasy, the spells, everything. Um, 12, uh, probably one of my personal favorite games, uh, Final Fantasy games, um, had all of like that cool... Uh, um, allure and charm of Ivalice and had some really excellent musical score and voice acting and really kind of felt more mature um, and was a really great return to Ivalice. I hate you for doing this to me. It's one of my favorites, man. Uh, <laughs> for so many reasons I could go into. It's just so ahead of its time in a lot of ways and I'll nail all of its systems. Um, but unfortunately, like the weakest part of that game was just like the plot and characters, even though they were good. Um, Final Fantasy Tactics has that beat with its mood, with its um, narrative, and uh, with the characters in it. Um, Final Fantasy yeah. Tactics moves on. So let's let's go to Nick next, uh, just in case we need uh, Alex for the uh, for the tiebreaker. So Nick, want to? Yeah, please don't make me do another tiebreaker. Yeah, you've already so, done so enough. These are really stressful. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So you know, Will, it's interesting. I think you and I have talked about Final Fantasy twelve in, de in detail a lot because uh, you're one of the only people I know who really likes it, like I do. <laughs> to be honest, so you and me, a couple other people. I really like it. I'm. I agree with Will too that I think Evilise is one of the cooler, more interesting Final Fantasy worlds, and I love every game that goes back to it. Mm -hmm. um, so. I'm also going to reiterate Will's point. Final Fantasy XII is a weird game, okay? I think the overarching, like, what happens in the game, it's such an interesting diversion from what Final Fantasy is. It's really about the world, about its political structure. Yep. I didn't give a flying fuck about any of these characters. They are all, they could all literally be the exact same character. They could all just be three blobs from Final Fantasy I on the NES. I didn't give a fuck. None of them were interesting, except maybe Balthier. He's kind of cool. But other than that, yeah, no. I don't know why you start the game as Van or Vaughn, however you pronounce it. Then he just immediately becomes irrelevant. I don't know who the main character is. Um, and like Final Fantasy VI, you, there's really no main character, but in twelve it just doesn't work. Yeah. Um, I think the main villain is not on screen enough to really like care about fighting him. What's, I don't remember his name, to be honest with you. Vane Solid something, rather? I don't know. Um, all I remember is 
I went into the final fight with three dudes. I was like, yeah, fuck it, let's go. And we just won. And then the game ended and I felt absolutely nothing. Yeah. Yep. At the end of the day, I think it's a really fun game. The Gambit system is super interesting. And Greg, you'll like this. When I walked into that tavern and I saw Mont Blanc, I went, yeah, dude, Mont Blanc, my boy. Dude, my yeah. boy, who I kill permanently every playthrough when I play no. Tactics Advance. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so like, I like Final Fantasy XII. Oh, I also should say, I didn't play the original Final Fantasy XII. I played the Zodiac Age remake on PS4. They're very similar, sure. right? They're played, pretty similar. I played the original, the so we have both had the same opinion on the game. Yeah, I think I think the game is very good, honestly. I think if the characters were done a bit better, to be honest, all I really remember is Van and the bunny lady and then Balthier, that's really it. Everyone else can just kind of fuck off. Yeah, yep. To be honest. Oh, and also the outfits in this game might be the dumbest in Final Fantasy history. Like <laughs> Whole nother what is this outfit? Like what is that held together by? I don't understand. Yeah. I just don't get it. Um, either way, Tactics is an incredibly special game. Like I don't think I need to go on about what Will said. And Will hit right on the money. The mood, the everything, the job system. It is classic Final Fantasy in that gritty, punch you right in the mouth story that you really want and you love in a game. Final Fantasy Tactics moves on for me. All right. So those are some very convincing arguments. Uh, Mr. Alex, um, <laughs> do you have anything to add? I don't know that I do, to be honest with you. I, I, have, I have made the great mortal sin of never playing Tactics. Okay. Mm. Um, I have played 12 and I enjoy 12, but I agree that the story is very underwhelming. The characters are forgettable, unfortunately. Um, I, for some reason, I always love the twist opening that you play the prologue as, I think, Van's brother. Ah, uh, that's oh a God. really good opening. I yeah. forgot about that. Jesus. Yeah, yeah. the opening is epic too. That FMV, really cool. It is. Yes. It's oh my awesome. gosh. And, and I think it really sets, it's really the only motivation that I had to finish the story was just Van avenging his brother, uh, finding mm -hmm. out what happened. Um, yeah, other than that, I mean, I, I thought the, the real-time battle system I kind of got used to after a while. I always preferred the... the, um, uh, the like the turn-based or the ATB gauges. Yeah. Yeah. I always preferred that. But uh, yeah, I got used to it. I, and I didn't. I don't hate 12. Um, yep. So, uh, you know, everyone I talk to loves tactics and they swear by it, but uh, I never played it. So I'm going to go by with 12 by default. Sure. Um, so Final Fantasy Tactics is going to move on because if I had to input, I would go with Tactics as well. I actually, yeah. I think I was talking to Will and Nick about this recently. I only played it. Was it this year or was it right before quarantine it was it was not that long ago and i you know i played you know tactics advance and the the cute ones when i was a kid and i finally played the original one and like i think you guys are right like it's it's such like a dark story and not only dark it's like very sad and miserable the whole time which is right up my alley for game stories i like and like i you can't beat those grid based games i just love games on a grid hell yeah so Okay, uh, let's move on to the next bracket here. We are still in our initial rounds. Um, this would be a tough one for me. Hmm. I don't know what you guys will say about this. I think we're going to start with Alex here. No. Um, the <laughs> next bracket is Final Fantasy IV versus Final Fantasy IX. Oh, wow. Oh! The two games that nobody I don't hear anybody talk about one way or another. Really? Yeah. I um, don't know how people feel about these. Yep. For me, it's a easy pick for nine. Okay. Uh, I, I love I love the story. Um, I, there are so many like great set pieces, like the uh, I think it's like the the uh, fake joust that you do, or like the play joust that you have to uh, impress the king with. Those segments like that, like there's there's one like that in, in seven where you have to do the uh, soldier celebration dance to impress the. Uh, the elites, I guess, of, of Shinra or something, like Rufus. And I've always loved segments like that. And um, Nine has that. I, I believe it has the job system in it, right, uh, Nine? I don't, I don't think know. it has Do you jobs, guys... no? but no. Nine definitely has like a return to form. Like there's like, Vivi is a black mage, just not, you can't just like choose it, but he is a black mage, yeah. Literally a black mage. Um, yeah, I love the return to, to four uh, party members uh, after seven and eight. And uh, yeah, surprisingly, I love the art style too. Like I love the uh, the medieval Gothic uh, vibes and uh, 
yeah, I, I've always loved nine, so that that's going to be my pick. Okay, um, so we have we have a vote in for nine. Nick, why don't you go ahead, just in case we have Will for the tiebreaker? Sure. Uh, okay, so nine's an interesting one for me. Um, nine is actually the last, aside from the seven remake, the last Final Fantasy game I played. Oh. It was the only remaining game in the series that I had not played, and I played the. Uh, it's not like a remake or a remaster. I think it's a, they ported it to the Switch. That's yeah. how I played it. Yeah. Um, so I played that, I think, last year. I played it, funnily enough, I played this game 100% on train rides to and from work. Yeah. And it was beautiful. <laughs> perfect. And it was yeah. it was great. Like, the perfect game for that. It, I had a weird experience with Nine. I, I really liked it. I will say I liked it. I, I'm going to quote Greg on here on his Bloodborne take. I think I accidentally beat this game as fast as possible. Mm-hmm. I beat it in like 15 to 20 hours. Wow. And I was like, oh, I'm done. Uh, oops. Oops. But, <laughs> um, I did really like it, honestly. I think there's some really cool uh, really cool aspects to it. I love that you don't need to bring a healer or a white mage if you really don't want to. Right. Um, I think I ended the game with um, obviously Zidane, Steiner, Vivi, and Freya. And I was able to beat the game without healing just based on like using Regen. Wow. Right. Uh, Greg, I think you would like Nine a lot mm-hmm. because I haven't played it. Guess what system it uses? I, I mean, it came first. Blue uh, mage. There is a Blue Mage. There is a Blue Mage in Nine. I did not use him. He eats people to get their <laughs> moves. But uh, <laughs> Kina is very fun. But uh, it you, it came before Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced, but it uses the same system of gaining skills. Weapons have a little bar that you have to fill up that you get AP for. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like that. I think it's a cool thing where you, ooh, I got this fun new weapon. Oh, but I haven't mastered that last skill yet. Do I keep this crappier weapon on just to master it? What's what's the deal here? But you can also equip a whole bunch of skills. Like some things will give you, you become immune to poison. You do more damage to beasts. You do more damage to dragons. You have to kind of pick and choose your skills to fit what area you're in. I think that's really cool. Um, I, I'm, I'm with Alex on the art style. It's definitely a little strange at first because I don't think any other Final Fantasy game is like it. But it's definitely weird. Like Zidane's like, what is he? Is he a human? Is he a monkey? He's got a tail. What's going on here? Yeah, right. And I I did. (laughs) So I did end up actually enjoying the art style. And Alex, now that you said it, um, the whole jousting, the whole acting in the play, Zidane being like, he's actually in a play, in a, I'm sorry, what the heck do they call them? A a troop, an acting troop. You know, so I thought that was an interesting uh, part of the story there. I did think the end of the game was kind of stupid. Um, the final boss is awful. I'm not talking about Kuja. I'm talking about Necron. Uh, mm-hmm. That is an awful final boss. I don't know why he exists. All I remember is I got status ailmented up the ass like six times. I had to redo that battle so many freaking times. I was so angry. And I was in the middle seat on a train fighting that thing. And I think the two people to both sides of me were like, what the fuck is wrong with this kid? He's getting so angry. But, <laughs> um, but I did really like Nine. I liked it more than I thought. And I think there's a there's definitely a vocal minority of people who really love Final Fantasy Nine. Um, Nick, do you have an argument either way for four? Because I think yes. you guys are strongly going for nine right now. Am I? Oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. This is actually, I'm actually just biding my time because I really liked both of these games. Final Fantasy IV is incredible. Okay. Um, this is an incredible game. And I think the, especially for its time, its story is incredibly intriguing. Um, the story of Cecil and how he sort of rebirths himself all the different characters like Kane. Fun fact, Kane is in Final Fantasy II. Mm, he is that's right. He's Ricard's son. He comes back in this one. That was a fun little tie-in. Um, but I, I really liked all the characters in four. But I think where the game actually falls a little flat in four is this is gonna be a weird take. There is no definitive version of this game. Right. If you tell someone to play Final Fantasy IV, you'll get Bunch of different opinions. Nope, SNES is better. Nope, Game Boy Advance is better. Nope, DS is better. Nope, the mobile game is better. Nope, blah, 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 blah. This game has been ported and remastered so many times. I don't really know why, to be honest. So my experience is mostly based on Game Boy Advance and the DS remake. Uh, The DS remake had voice acting. I think it was the first handheld game that I played that had voice acting, which is really interesting. I don't remember it being terrible, but then again, I was young and it was a DS, so my my standards probably weren't very high. this is actually a really hard choice for me because um, I really appreciate the narrative of Final Fantasy IV. 
Um, I really love the characters, and especially in the Game Boy Advance version, uh, you can actually pick and choose your party at the end of the game, which I guess is not in the original. You can't do oh, that okay. except party. Right. Um, and something about four that's not in any other game is the five party member system, mm -hmm. which is really interesting. I don't believe any other game in the series does that. I could be wrong, um, but uh, I'm really just like wasting time here so I can make a choice. Uh, oh God, man. Nick, you could, you, you could defer to Will and hear his arguments and come back with a choice. Because okay, because listen here, I'm gonna give some props to Alex right now. I heard four verse nine and I said four. And then I heard what Alex said and I'm like, shit, good point. Dude, so now I'm, I'm conflicted. Now we could, here's what we could do. Will, if you have an argument for both games, you could make your arguments and we could have uh, Nick decide based on it, if, if he was convinced by you either way. Okay, sure. Let's do it. Will, let, let's lay it on me. Okay, cool. Um, so this is a, indeed a really, really tough one. Um, and it's a really well chosen one too, because uh, on the one hand, Final Fantasy IV is uh, the first Final Fantasy game that like really gave you an iconic plot. And mm -hmm. um, Final Fantasy IX uh, was the first game that kind of like took a step uh, back to the past. Like it turned its head back to the past of Final Fantasy in a really big way and like really like whereas seven and eight were kind of like new things they were trying in six two which they were trying new things and exploring new ways of like doing like these like developing the identity of final fantasy final fantasy nine um really like was the first one to be like hey remember all like the good stuff about final fantasy but the ironic thing is that like and i think this is kind of the reason why people forget about it is it doesn't in like uh ultimately it didn't have its own strong identity i feel it was an excellent game and had really engaging characters and I felt like it did and it hit a lot of really great notes but it had like the idea like I, I think people kind of forget about it because it, it kind of had to ha try to have it both ways it had the old Final Fantasy stylings and it had the black mage characters and it had like the the same kind of like fantasy feel and the crystals of course but also um it did the new item system and you know it had the guy with the tail and it you know it did some funky stuff um, all these things were really good, by the way. It just, like, it, I, I don't know if people might, people might not have launched onto that as much. Um, okay, so Final Fantasy IX, there were good things about it, and I really liked that game. Um, I thought it was probably the most refined kind of gameplay-wise of all of the PlayStation Final Fantasies. It's really smooth and fun to play. The item system is really, really fun. And, um, and I did like all the characters as well, and uh, the world was really fun, and I have just really great memories playing this game on the PS1. It's just so, such a, a great, um, like, old school Final Fantasy experience that felt like, still kind of fresh at the time, because Final Fantasy New still really, It's a really tough choice, because Final Fantasy IV is that, like, iconic game where it had all, like, the original elements, and it had Cecil and his, you know, fall from grace, and, and uh, what was redemption. Um, mm. It's really, really tough. Um, I would probably have to be four for that reason was just because it has uh it doesn't help at all man it doesn't <laughs> help me <laughs> i mean with final fantasy 9 i mean i have like my, my personal preferences and my like critical kind of like looks at like the final fantasy games and um as far as like pure final fantasy goes story is kind of like i feel like final fantasy lives and dies by story it's what separates the good ones from the great ones and Final Fantasy IV has just like, I can, you can recite that fucking plot. It's really effective. And um, there's not a whole lot to it, but you know, same with Dark Souls, there was really only like one kind of like central goal you followed, but there was a lot behind what was going on. And um, for that reason, I think like it, it ends up being stronger just as an experience. Um, and it leaves more of a, a mark indelibly. Um, I haven't played it much longer than Final Fantasy IX. So it, like Final Fantasy IX is so much more fresh and like those experiences are more fresh for me. But if, you, if I really kind of like take a critical look at it, I got to give it to four. Um, just because four was really pushing it, really trying some new stuff and, and really trying to like elevate story and characters uh, in a time where like well, all the previous Final Fantasy games um, really hadn't accomplished that at all. Um, so so unfortunately, does, does this come down to Nick again to, yeah, to make a tiebreaker? Right. We have a okay, vote so for nine and a vote for four. I think, Nick, you just got to pull the Band-Aid here. What yep. is it? Here's what I'm going to say. So um, I actually should um, amend my argument a little bit. 
I did call out Final Fantasy IX for having a kind of a bullshit final boss end ending. I can't do that. And Greg, it's a very interesting matchup that you chose these two because Final Fantasy IV also has a pretty bullshit final boss and <laughs> ending where you beat the final boss and you have to fight some bullshit, ridiculously tough boss to actually win the game. Yeah. Um, so both these games do that. So very, I don't, I don't think you knew that, Greg. So it's very interesting nope. that you put <laughs> these two games together. It's the two um, games I knew nothing about. Right. Um, I will say, I think uh, this might be a hot take here. It might be my favorite or in my top two or three final boss songs, Final Fantasy IV. That final boss music is fucking incredible, especially in the Game Boy Advance. If you haven't listened to it, I recommend you do. It's it, it's excellent. But here's my final decision. All right, guys. I went into this four versus nine saying, listen, four is fucking woo, absolutely better than nine. And I agree with Will on basically everything he said. And then Alex gave his impassioned speech. And I'm like, if you can make me question, <laughs> make me question it. And I still am. Yeah. I got to give it to nine. Absolutely wow. To you, well nice done. Job. I'm going with nine. Nice job. Wow. Beautiful. Alex with the filibuster on the Senate floor <laughs> and getting the votes. Good <laughs> I agree with everything Will said. Nine and I don't have anything else to add to it. But Alex, man, you just skyrocketed my opinion of nine. Well done. Oh, thank you, man. Yeah. Well, well done. Well, you you nailed it with four too. I was like, man, that's a that's a that's a solid case for four. <laughs> yeah, very I'm satisfied with this outcome. I, I think nine deserves it. You know, it's a great yeah. game and definitely underappreciated. Um, and there's yeah, I, good reason why people. I hate that I waited so long to play it. I should have played it earlier on in life. I feel like I got, I got cheated by not playing it earlier on. Yeah, sure. I um, now we we're gonna hit the um. This is the final opening bracket. Uh, I out of the opener? Oh shit. Yeah, this is the because remember we had to reduce this from 16 down to 8 first. So this is True. all the we had to we had to go through we had to kind of dig through the mud here. Yeah, right. So this would be a hard one for me. I'm not really sure what you guys will say. But uh -oh. this is um this is the um the final matchup of the opener. And um that's gonna do it for the night, and then um have our second segment, we'll go from eight to one. So the final matchup here is Final Fantasy VIII versus Final Fantasy Tactics Advance. <laughs> this is really funny. Okay. <laughs> okay, so why don't we start with Will, if you don't mind. Final Fantasy VIII versus FFTA. Okay. Um, FFTA, uh, when I got it, um, it's, uh, there were a lot of things that I thought were inferior to Final Fantasy Tactics, but it is a really, like, it was the art, like the killer app for GBA, and it was huge and expansive and media and awesome. And um, yeah, it's a great game. But Final Fantasy VIII is um, one of the first RPGs that I can even remember where they actually like took a romantic subplot and just made it like kind of believable and made you invested in it. Mm -hmm. um, not only that, Final Fantasy VIII had just a bonkers world. Um, mm -hmm. It had a crazy gameplay system where you like made gold through salary, which is fucking amazing. <laughs> Um, like working an eight to five and fighting monsters on the side. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't, you didn't level up at all. No, yeah. um, it was just weird. And like I, I struggled with the game when I because it, like it was so much different than like your normal Final Fantasy. But I, um, I turned through that whole thing, and um, I really got to say that that is a, quite quite a game. That is an experience that you had the FMV combined with the uh, with the gameplay uh, right like seamlessly in the game. The battles looked amazing. The summoning was like accessible right from the start. You were just like blasting people with like, um, uh, like your, what are they called? Eidolons or the summons? I forgot what they were referred to as. Guardian Force GF. Oh, the G, you gotta get yeah, your GF. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> gotta go buy some GFs. <laughs> I love how they acronymed it too, because it just, it made it seem like that giant robot anime kind of vibe where everyone has like that super special inner power. And it really was like, it, it made no sense at all. It had that like crazy mind bender of a plot where um, you just like, you were switching perspectives and they didn't explain why until like the very end, you just had to figure it out. Um, and it had like that, that, uh, that theme song it had for like the romantic scene where they were trapped together. That was a really great scene. I, there's nothing in Final Fantasy Tactics Advance that could compare to that. In my opinion, um, the only thing that I hated about Final Fantasy VIII was the mini game card game. Um, oh, don't tell triple Josh triad. that. Josh loves Triple Triad. Triple Triad, right? That's the name. I and Josh loves Triple Triad. You know, he, oh yeah. <laughs> that, that's I. You know, I, I admire that about him. That's a great. 
I wish I was good at it. I could never figure it out. I just, I couldn't get my head around the rules. Uh, Pretty sure he just bought the Switch version of Final Fantasy VIII just to play Triple Triad Portable. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he did. <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's gotta be eight for me. Um, that's, that's probably one of the, I mean, I love that game so much. Alex, do you have an opinion either way? Oh, I do. On, you do, go ahead, please. So I never played Tactics Advance, um, but it didn't matter. Um, <laughs> Whatever is going up against eight, I'm picking eight because um, okay, it, that is my game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> One of these matchups coming is going to be hard for you, dude. Like I, I could anticipate what's coming, but go ahead. Yeah, Why is eight your game? I know uh, I'm going down with the ship. Uh, <laughs> I there are so many moments in that game that are etched into my mind, and when I I, I was playing the the soundtrack through YouTube the other day, I was like. I love this music. Like, th there's so many moments of genius in the game where you go on a on a on a training mission for Seed, and you have to take Cipher, who is the basically the main villain. Like, he is like the uh, I don't know. He's like the Sephiroth to the Genova of of Seven, and he is giving you orders, and you don't want to take the orders because he's such a he's. He is the makings of like uh, of a cruel leader, but if you do what he says to the T, you are rewarded. And and th there, no other game would do something like that. And um, the music is incredible. Do you know what uh, Alex? Just to interrupt you briefly. Do you know what's so funny? Do you know what's only only game I can think of where that happens? You'll laugh. Okay. It's Heavy Rain. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, or like uh, spoilers, you you play as the killer the whole time, yeah. so like oh, that's awesome. <laughs> anyway, continue with it. your argument. <laughs> Were you a good father? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Final Fantasy VIII is your game. It, it's, it's my game, and yeah, like Will was right. Um, the romantic subplot kind of makes the game tick. Um, the Renoa Squall uh, romance and. Um, yeah, it, it's it's such a special thing for me because I remember being in love with Seven, but the one thing that I always wished it had was the fully developed polygon character models that walk around, mm -hmm. and it had that. And to me, that was just like such a jump in, in graphics um, that it just blew me away. And um, I, I love the junction system. You know, there's no no other Final Fantasy that tried that. You know, I feel like they tried something really new. I thought they nailed it, but they got so much hate they never went back. And really, no game has really tried that, where you take a system that works, that people are familiar with, and you try to reimagine how it works. Like, it, like it'd be like if Dark Souls, or Dark Souls 2, <laughs> if, like, you know, taking, like, the big NPCs in the game, instead of having a covenant that you that you're a part of, it's like, it fuses with your character and it's a part of your build. Um, it, it, it would, it's just such a great idea. And I feel that um, the backlash really hindered what could have been if they went down that road. And uh, yeah, it's just my game. That's really it. <laughs> wow. So um, I believe we have two votes for eight. So Nick, even though it, even though it, it doesn't matter in terms of the votes, um, do you, would you like to speak a little bit on, you know what, let's do this. Tactics is going to lose anyway, because it's now two to nothing. Why don't you talk about Final Fantasy Tactics Advance? Yeah. Okay. So I want to talk about a little, little bit of both of these. I didn't sure. realize I was in a podcast with a bunch of filthy eight lovers. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. okay. Full disclosure. Um, so I played Final Fantasy eight. I played the port on the switch right before I played nine. I actually liked it a lot too, to be honest. I thought eight was really fun. Um, I don't know if I would have liked it as much without fast forward, because that made junctioning a lot easier, no to reason. be honest, because that probably took a long time in the original PS1. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I actually had a, I, I guess I can save my impassioned speech for eight for later. Maybe I don't even need it with you guys here. Save it. That's some really good points about why eight is actually a good game, but uh, it seems like you guys actually like it. So I don't know if I'll even have to use it. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, Nick, Final Fantasy Tactics yeah. Advance was a really important game from my childhood and yours. Yeah, so I, I think I think we should give it its we should give it its pat on the back before it's it's already lost. So I'm gonna one, read, don't worry, I'm gonna read its eulogy. Um, yeah, go ahead. Tactics Advance was probably I'm try I hope I get the timelines right. I think it was both mine and yours introduction to turn-based strategy. 
Or I don't know whether attractive. Fire Emblem or Tactics Advance was the first one, but yes. I can't remember which one came first, but this one may have been first. Um, we both love this game from the onset. This is a very nostalgic game for me. Uh, although um, going back to it when I'm older, uh, the loss system is just so terrible that I, I thought it was fine when I was a kid. But now after playing other tactics games, like obviously the original Final Fantasy Tactics or Fire Emblem or any other grid-based strategy RPGs, I find the loss system to just be needlessly burdensome over yeah. what you can do. Um, but I do have to speak that Final Fantasy Tactics Advance is a good game. Seriously, it is a good game. It's going to lose here because Final Fantasy VIII is just superior. But Tactics Advance is a good game. And if you're listening to this podcast and have never played a tactics game or a grid-based strategy game before, Tactics Advance is probably one of the best ways to get into the genre. It's yeah. a little goofy, a little quirky. It's not overly difficult, um, but it gives, it gives you a really nice, satisfying tactical experience and a lot of really nice customization with some questing. And honestly, it's very fun. Um, it's It hurts to have to pick something over at Tactics Advance because I love this game. I still do. I'll play through it every now and again. But if I do, I use a cheat that turns laws off. But that's, yeah. that's neither here nor there. Um, I um I was going to say the ahead. same where like it's so customizable and I love the the weapon and armor system where like you get AP based on like if you win battles while wearing it, that's how you yeah. get abilities. Mm -hmm. I really like, like that. I and I thought that was a great system. It's a goofy game. I mean, the story's really nothing to write home about, I guess, with the goofy snowball fights and shit. Mm -hmm. But like, I mean, it's a good game. I, I, I think you're right. I think Final Fantasy Tactics Advance for me, it's a better, what's the word? It's one of those games where I think the mechanics of like the customization and the abilities are so good and so fun that I forgive how kind of silly and sort of superfluous every other part of that game is. I totally like, agree. And, and if you think yeah. about, um, if you go with the really fun fan theory that Marsh, your main character, is actually the villain who's taking everybody's perfect world away to go back to his own shitty world, that's really the ideal way to experience the game where you are the villain. Everyone else can go, can go die. And that's why kill They kind of had some themes of that in the writing of the game, too. Yeah. Like, where are they? Well, I was going to say, that's why killing Mont Blanc should be canon, because he sucks. No, and I, and I always kill him. Because <laughs> he lowers the average level of your party if you don't use him. It sucks. I know. I didn't know think you could die. Like that, one of the reasons I didn't like that game as much as, uh, even though I played the hell out of it, but tactics is that you really couldn't die. Like there was no death in that game. Like there was no stakes for losing a character. There is a little bit though. Um, I actually got to thank Final Fantasy XII for this. Uh, it taught me how to pronounce Yogged. That, that's right. In, in the Yogged levels, your characters would die permanently, but any in any other level, they did not. Yep. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. So that's why I keep making the joke where I'd always kill Mont Blanc the first opportunity I could because he's a <laughs> he's a bad Moogle mage and he lowers your party's level. So I'd always <laughs> kill him. Um, so but anyway, good. we have done the argument for the 16 seeds. Whew. And uh, we have brought it down to eight games. Uh, that is going to do it for this episode. And um, on the next episode, we're going to bring it from eight to one. So thank you guys. Uh, this is uh, Greg, my brother Nick, Alex, and Will were here today. Uh, we are going to have a second episode where we go from eight to one. But for now, we're signing off. So thank you guys for your impassioned speeches and especially Alex for his filibuster for Final Fantasy IX. So yeah, great job. Night, really. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> great job. Thanks, guys.